Hey guys, Spence here, and this is my impressions on the Early Access version of Dead Cells. The game was released by an indie developer named Motion Twin, and gone on Steam through the Greenlight system. On the game's main website, it says it's inspired by Castlevanias, while on the Steam page it says it has 2D Dark Souls-like combat. In theory, this should be a really cool combination, but what exactly is going on in Dead Cells? When this cheery game begins, you take control of a decapitated corpse that has been reanimated by some weird goop that catches fire, I don't know, man. After that, you have a light conversation that you only hear half of, and you then begin exploring the castle. Control-wise, you can move left and right, jump, squat, do a dodge roll that works exactly like in Dark Souls, and have access to a double jump, albeit a small one. Now, the castle is crawling with enemies throughout its different biomes and zones. To deal with them, you can equip two different main weapons, two sub-weapons, and an amulet which gives you stat bonuses like reduced damage by 12%. Now your sub-weapons are usually stuff that's thrown, such as bombs or traps. Meanwhile, main weapons run the gamut between being melee, ranged, or heck if they're even capable of doing damage on their own or not. And in typical Dark Souls fashion, each one is different, whether they have really short range but a lot of hits to them, like the twin knives, or a longer range but less hits to them, like the blood sword. Weapons can also have abilities outside of their main passive one. For example, there's a sword that will always have the ability to cause enemies to bleed if they're hit, but it could have other abilities with that, such as increasing your strength, increasing your health, or doing 100% more damage to burning enemies. After you go through an area, going through all the pathways you can go down and dealing with every enemy you can run across, eventually you'll reach the game's Dead Cell Merchant. When you actually meet him, you have to offer up Dead Cells if you want to progress further. Dead Cells basically being the other currency that enemies drop besides gold, that in the later dungeons start to drop with increased frequency. By offering Dead Cells, you can upgrade items that you find throughout the dungeon, or if you happen to have a blueprint, you can offer up Dead Cells so you can build the item, allowing it to appear in the dungeon now, after which you can upgrade it normally like other weapons. And lucky for you, he'll give you the item the first time you build it, so you can try it right away and know if you want to use it or not. Now as a rogue light, all the weapon upgrades and blueprints that you find carry over after death, but all of your current equipment and dead cells and any currency that you have will not. Unless you have the appropriate upgrades. Now while the world of dead cells is already interesting, the way you traverse the world is interesting as well. The world is separated into different biomes and you can think of each one as their own given zone, and each one is sprawling going upwards and downwards and to the right, with different branching paths within them that lead to different zones. Some paths can only be accessed after you gain certain abilities that you get for defeating bosses that you have permanently, by the way, while others you can traverse to immediately. Now, in each zone, while there are teleportation shrines that you can find to allow you to traverse and get different areas of that given zone, you cannot go back to a previous zone, meaning that you can only move forward. But you can linger around in the current zone if you want, without any real repercussion, like the Grim Reaper showing up trying to kill you like in other roguelikes. Yet. This is still early access, remember? The gameplay itself is well designed and a lot of fun. This mainly comes down to the weapons that you get, as a lot of them feel very satisfying to use. Especially when you find uses for the more unique ones, like the electrical whip one is actually really good at dealing with smaller flying enemies. Or the assassin blade, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage up front, but if you hit enemy from the back, it does triple that. So coupled with the right skills, the Assassin Blade can actually be a big asset to your campaign. And when I say weapons, this includes sub-weapons as well, though you don't have access to that many when you first start the game. Also, there's the biome and weapon variety. Every biome is different in their own unique way, whether it's unique by having a lot of spikes, being very vertical and having a lot of holes in it, or being toxic. All the while, enemies change accordingly, though sometimes difficulty can kind of spike depending on where you go. But like I said, a lot of the fun in this game comes from finding new weapons and finding new ways to defeat enemies while upgrading yourself so you can go further than you did the last time, and surmounting challenges that you couldn't before, whether it's because you didn't have the right equipment at the time, or you just weren't strong enough. In short, the game is a lot of fun, if you happen to like games like Rogue Legacy or Assault and Sanctuary, this is definitely up your alley. Presentation-wise, in the visual department, a lot of the time I forget it's a sprite-based game. A lot of the sprites are very well animated, even though they're all slightly blurry to an extent, where everything is slightly obscure. Like, you can very much so make out what something is, but you still can't make out all of the details. Regardless, the animation that goes along with it definitely carries it all. And that's not even talking about all the biomes and different locations, which all have a lot of little details within them that make them just stand out and feel like desolate places that you wouldn't want to be in at any point in time. And the game just continues to exude this weird, overbearing atmosphere of dread. Like something bad has already happened and you're just trying to make everything break even. 
then again, you do play the game as a reanimated, decapitated corpse, so yeah, I guess there's a reason for that. Oh, and PC options? Well, it's in early access, so there really are not a lot, even for a sprite-based game, so... And when it comes to the sound department, this music fits the atmosphere very, very well. The soundtrack is very low in tone, using drums and chants to give this feeling of dread yet urgency in the first level, and in other levels it becomes way more atmospheric, giving more of that feeling of dread, but once again, decapitated a corpse, so... Yeah. But in general, the music fits the tone of the game very well, and if you have a chance to listen to it in your free time, I will recommend it, though they don't have the means of doing that for some reason. They really should look into that. Get on that motion twin, like, make a band camp or something. Come on. Please? And that's generally my opinion on the Early Access version of Dead Cells. This is an example of what an Early Access game should be. Something with a solid system and a solid foundation within it that can capable of being played and having a good amount of fun with it. If you get a chance, you should look at the Steam page and look at the Early Access game section of it. They give a very good breakdown on why they're in Early Access, what they want to do in Early Access, and what you should expect from Early Access. In short, it's a fun game in development that hopefully in the coming months or year according to them, It'll come out and be really popular, and be another success story under Greenlight's belt. You know, before it buys the farm, metaphorically. So it's just like the protagonist of any roguelike. It doesn't have a whole lot to start off with, but it does have the potential to go the distance, and in this case, I really hope it succeeds in the end. Hello again, and thanks for watching until the end. If you happen to like this sort of content, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and definitely tell a friend who also be interested in this sort of content. In the meantime, if you want to figure out what I'm doing, you always stalk the Spence Session Twitter account at Spence underscore Session. Granted, it's mostly just a collection of links that I find interesting and stuff relating to Spence Session and Spence Session streams that happen Monday and Thursday. 